So, what we have uh, observed this much uh, so far is that the there is a lower bound that we found which is uh, omega of g, the click number, and an upper bound which we found which is the delta of g plus one, which is the uh, upper bound for the chromatic number. Right. So the chromatic number is between these two. Now we can ask many many questions. Right. When is this uh, lower bound? This is an interesting question. There are several classes that we know attain this, but we still don't know universally uh, when. Then uh, can uh, chi be much larger uh, than uh, omega of g? Okay. I mean, like uh, so. So we know that you know the, the clicks will make uh, you know the chromatic number large, right? If you have a large click with uh, let's say t vertices, then we need at least t clicks. Now, can you have t to be small, right? The complete graph omega to be small, and then make the uh, chromatic number much larger than uh, omega, right? The click size. So, because because in the case of hot cycles, right, the delta is just two, right? And, uh, you know, but uh, that doesn't say that you know for very large uh, uh, numbers, chromatic numbers, we can uh, have this property. But is it possible? So here is a, an interesting uh, uh, result, which says that we can have graph without triangles, okay, where the chromatic number is as large as we want. What do you mean by triangle? Triangle is three vertices which are adjacent to each other, which is a complete graph on three vertices. Now, if I if I if I if I have uh, several vertices, and if there is no triangle, then I cannot have any complete graph more than uh, complete graph on two edges, an edge, right? Because if you have any larger complete graph, every uh, vertices are adjacent, so therefore you will automatically get a triangle as a subgraph. So when there is no triangle, we know that the click number omega is going to be two, right? So what we are saying is that we have graphs with omega is equal to two and chromatic number as large as you want. And how do you do that? Okay. So, of course, there are many ways to do this, but one uh, famous result was uh, this construction that is given by Misersky. Okay. So, Misersky construction uh, shows that if you are given a graph which does not contain triangles and uh, has some chromatic number, let's say uh, k, then I can make a graph from this graph. Right, a new graph whose chromatic number is strictly larger than k. In fact, it's equal to k plus one, and uh, there is still no triangle. So I start with a triangle-free graph. I make a new graph. The chromatic number increases by one without creating triangle. So therefore, I can keep on doing this. So I can make the chromatic number larger than that. So what is the procedure? So the procedure is the following. Okay? So given uh, the graph. So here is a uh, small example. Right. So, given this graph, I take the graph and keep it as it is, one copy. Okay. So, I keep the copy of the graph as it is. Now, I make a duplicate of every vertex. Okay. So, duplicate of vertex means that, uh, uh, so, so there is a copy of V1, right, which I call U1, there is a copy of V2, which I call U2, uh, etc. So I make these uh, copies of this uh, graph, and then uh, I I make you know the neighbors of U are not precisely the neighbors of V1. Okay, so V1 had the neighbor V2, so therefore U1 has the neighbor V2. Right? U2 had neighbor uh, I mean V2 had neighbor V1, therefore U2 has neighbor V1. Whatever is the neighbor of uh, you know V1 in the graph G, that same vertices are going to be the neighbors of uh, the corresponding vertex uh, here also. Okay. So now whatever graph I, uh, I get from here, finally I am going to add a new vertex, it is called W, and W is adjacent to all the new vertices that I introduce. Whatever is the number of vertices here, I am going to make W adjacent to each of them. Okay. Now, UI is uh, uh, form an independent set, right? That is immediately clear because uh, you can see that UI is there is 
uh, no edge between them because they were not neighbors of any of these uh, metrics right before right in the graph in this graph so therefore they form an independent so when i add w to these guys this is not going to create any triangle because if it creates a triangle there must be some edge here now similarly there was no uh, triangle in this graph so now there is no triangle here now can this create a triangle right now u1 is adjacent to all the neighbors uh, which were copies of I mean, like, you know uh, i mean uh, the neighbors of v1 right so if i look at uh, you know the graph with just u1 this u1 cannot be part of any triangle because u1 is precisely like v1 in the graph right if i look at the just the graph v with the addition of u1 you know if if there is a triangle involving u1 there is a triangle also involving v1 because that is the you know triangle in this graph only right any triangle here is also a triangle here so this is true for every single vertex and because there is no edge here we don't have to look at two of them together and therefore i show that this graph is triangle right so i get a, a triangle free graph by doing this and then now i want to show that the chromatic number also uh has the uh, increase by 1 right now how do you show this to show that the chromatic number is increased by 1 uh, we have to first show that uh, there is a coloring with uh, you know one more color and we have to show that there is no coloring with uh, the chromatic number of g mini colors okay so how do how do i do that so here is the here is an idea let us first uh, first show that uh, with uh, uh, with k plus 1 colors the coloring is possible that is easy right because i start with uh, a coloring of uh, of the graph g right uh, the first graph that i start with now whatever is the coloring here each vertex let's say vi has some color i use the same color to color ui also now because there is no edge between ui and uh, vi i can give the same color here no problem and uh, this color of course is okay to give because this vertex is adjacent to only the neighbors of v1 and v1 i have given this color c that c col uh, color c right and uh, because you know all the neighbors of v1 gets different colors right other than c all the neighbors of u1 also get a color difference so therefore u1 will not create any problem with uh, uh, with the uh, color right so this i can do for any ui so therefore i will get a i, I can use vi uh, the color of vi to be equal to the uh, color of ui so i get all these vertices uh, you know uh, the same color that is happening here and now for w i give a new color right the whatever is the chromatic number plus 1 right so one more color i give and that new color is used so because it is a new color it will not create any problem with any of the existing colors and therefore i get a proper coloring with one extra color now we want to show that by uh, uh, there is no coloring with uh you know chromatic number of g many colors right so let's say that chromatic number of uh, the graph is k then i want to show that there is no k color right uh, of the new graph now why there is no k coloring of new graph okay. suppose there is a k color so we will start by assuming that there is a k coloring of this new graph now suppose there is a k coloring of this new graph then uh, it uses uh, this k color that most is k color is 1 to k right on the vertices now given any coloring okay so this is one property of coloring right uh, given any coloring let us say using let us say color uh, red blue green etc i can always uh, change the names of the colors i will say that all the uh, red vertices now i am going to call as new green Okay. and all the green vertices in the original graph i am going to call as red right so i just change the names of red and blue to 
each other right so red is now the new blue and blue is i mean uh, is the new green and green is the uh, new uh, red right? so this is just renaming the colors it does not affect anything about the properness of the color right? because you no know, earlier it was called red now it is called blue i mean or green whatever so therefore i can always change the names of the colors as far as i change uniformly everywhere right all the red i change to uh, green and all the green i change to red right then it is okay so therefore uh, we can assume without loss of generality that the vertex w is colored with the color k just to make the argument easier we don't really have to assume right so we will assume that the vertex uh, w is colored with the color okay okay so here is a better picture i think so we have this uh, graph g uh, and u1 to un and uh, ui is adjacent to uh, all the uh, neighbors of vi also so u and here basically clones of it exactly the same vertex uh, just one uh, copy of uh, vi and uh, ui are independent and then w is adjacent to all of the ui so now uh, to to show that uh, uh, there is there is no k coloring i will uh, i will i will assume without loss of penalty that w is with color uh, colored with color k now because w is adjacent to all the uis uis cannot be uh, colored with color k right? so therefore u1 to un must be colored with uh color is the 1 to k minus 1 right this must be the color that is used on ui because k cannot be used on ui now if 1 to k minus 1 is used on ui so i claim that i can use the same uh, 1 to k minus 1 to give a coloring of g also why is that because uh, see ui whatever color is for ui that is adjacent to the vertices here right so the color of ui is not going to be used on the neighbors of uh, vi right because ui and vi share the same set of neighbors so therefore since uh, ui is given some color whatever color it is that color can be given to vi also because the neighbors will use uh, different colors right so this i can do for every ui which means that the colors used here can be exactly used on the colors we want to be in but this says that i am using uh, you know uh, just the color is 1 to k minus 1 to color all the vertices of the graph g but g was a graph with chromatic number k which means that there is no k minus 1 proper color so this contradiction proves that you know uh, there is no uh, coloring where only we are using uh, k colors so therefore the chromatic number is at least k plus one. and we already proved that it is actually uh, at most k plus 1 so therefore uh, the chromatic number increases by exactly one so we get a graph from a, a triangle tree graph we get a new triangle tree graph whose chromatic number increases by one. now i can start from this new triangle tree graph and increase the chromatic number again by one. So I can keep on doing this. So I get larger and larger chromatic number. So this is called the Meselskian uh, construction. Meselski construction, and uh, such graphs are called Meselskian. So given a graph G, no, the Meselskian of G is the graph we construct this. Way. Take the graph, make copies of each of the vertices, right? And we find that exactly the same numbers are in the graph G. and because this is the new independent set i make it a new vertex adjacent to w and then i will get this new graph which is missing so this is the construction okay now there is another famous result of uh, paul and dirt which says that we can have graphs with arbitrarily large girth and arbitrarily large chromatic so what is the girth so the girth of a graph is the length of the shortest cycle okay shortest cycle 
right? So we we say that you know it's not just triangles, right? We can we can make your cycle as large as you want. Okay, the smallest cycle is as large as you want. So there is not going to be any other edges making this, right? This cannot be an edge connecting. It will be become smaller. So you will have all the cycles be large enough, right? In the graph. So as large as you want, you can make the smallest cycle, and then you can make the uh, girth. I mean, the chromatic number also as large as you want. Okay. So this is using uh, uh, probabilistic method. We will uh, probably not discuss the proof, but we will learn uh, at least some of the tools that is required to work out this uh, details. Uh, so this is a very very old result of Polytos, and very influential one. And you will see that this result, precisely this result that uh, Edward used, uh, I mean uh, Edward proved was used to prove the uh, you know uh, addition uh, to come up with the uh, proof for the header name is uh, uh, this result was used to prove the header name is condenser right, that I mentioned uh, uh, some time before or maybe I you know sorry I will I will mention it uh, soon. So <clears throat> yeah, so uh, this is a very influential uh, result and uh, very famous result, and uh, it has so many applications, like you know, to on on existential uh, graph. Here. So where you show that, you know, you, you don't tell you how to come up with a graph like this, but you it will tell you there must be some graphs with this. Now, a very important operation uh, in graphs is called contraction of edges. So the definition is as follows. So given a graph G, it's a simple graph, and some edge, let's say U, U dash. Now what I, I do is that I take the graph G and delete the edge E. Okay? So just remove the edge G. Then I identify the vertices U and U dash to make a new vertex. Let's say U star. So I am not doing anything to any other vertex, right? The adjacency remains the same for you. All the neighbors are going to be there except the one that we just removed, right? Right, and for you dash, all the remaining neighbors are as it is. Now I basically identify this u and u dash, right? Which becomes a single vertex. So all the neighbors of u other than you know, u dash uh, will be there in, in the new graph. All the neighbors of uh, u dash other than you will also be neighbors of uh, this new vertex. So I get this new graph. So this is called the contraction of the edge. Okay. So here are some examples. So I start with this graph, right? Uh, yeah, I start with this graph. Then I find the graph G minus E by removing this edge that we fix. Right? So E is the edge, which is C and C dash. So I remove the edge E. I get this graph. Now I identify C and C dash, which means that C and C dash become the vertex C star. The neighbors of uh, C and C dash, right? C had the neighbor B, C dash had neighbor B. Right? They will be still be neighbors. Then C also had neighbor A, C dash had neighbor A, so C star will have neighbor A also. So after contraction of this H, I will get this graph G. I denote it by G uh, right slash E. Okay, so this is uh, one example. So here is another example. So I start from this graph, right? I, I take the edge u u dash as our edge to contract. So it means that I delete this edge. Now I identify u and u dash to u star. So of course the neighbors of u, which will be four, neighbors of uh, u1, which is two and three, will be neighbors of uh, this and four and one. And similarly, two and three will be neighbors of u star. Right. Remaining neighbor, uh, neighborhood uh, remains as it is, right? And uh, that's it. So you get uh, G bar. So this is the contraction process. Now the contraction is very important because uh, we will not go into the details of minutes. That uh, you know, uh, a graph. You start with any graph G, and you can apply as many as uh, deletions, contractions, or vertex deletions also possible if you want. Then you will get some kind of graphs from the start uh, starter graph. So these graphs that you can obtain by any 
sequences of uh, edge contractions, deletions, uh, and uh, vertex deletion are uh, called minors of the graph. So there is a huge area called minor theory, right, which studies like you know uh, to classify graph based on its minors, what are the properties. Many, 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 many uh, important results have been producing this. Okay, so there is there is a whole uh, set of courses one can offer based on just minor theory, not one course, several courses. So it's like it's a huge area, and I really have not looked much into minor theory, but it's a very interesting uh, area with many many applications. Uh, there are some few things we will see in in, in a graph theory course, in minor theory, like uh, uh, things like uh, you know classification of planar graphs using its minors and things like that. Uh, so these these things uh, we will uh, we will not discuss in this course. We can do this in a uh, in a lecture course on graph theory for example. So. Uh, so there's so I will not discuss minors for the time being. Is, I just defend this so that uh, we need this operation to look at something else. So what is that? So given a graph G, we so first thing that we said that what is the chromatic number, which is the minimum number of colors, which uh, you know uh, which suffices. To color the vertices of the graph such that adjacent vertices get different uh, colors. Right? Now, another uh, combinatorial question that one can ask is uh, given, given uh, a graph and let us say a set of colors. Let's say, let's say I, I tell you I am giving k colors because all the sets are like you know, you know, it's of the same cardinality are the same for us. Uh, we can just assume that it is a set, like once you know the cardinality. You just assume the numbers are from 1 to k are the colleagues, right? One number 1 to k are the colleagues. So, given uh, a graph G and a, a number k, I can ask how many k colorings, right? How many colors, how many uh, different colorings of the graph are possible with uh, using exactly uh, k colors? Okay, so the number of k colorings of the graph G. So this number uh, is uh, let's say chi of g comma k. Okay. So the graph G uh, and uh, is given, and then a number k is given. And the question is that what is uh, the number of colorings of G using k colors? So for each k you can find this, and for uh, general k you can write it as a function. So we can say this as a coloring function, right? If you assume k to be a variable or like you know replace it by x. So then I will get the uh, chromatic uh, function of the graph. Okay. Eventually, one can show uh, that uh, you know this function is always a polynomial, and therefore it is a chromatic polynomial. Uh, it is a nice exercise using some of the techniques that we learned, but uh, let us let us not go into that. Okay. So, given a graph, we we want to find out the uh, number of uh, colorings, right, proper colorings, using exactly k colors. Now, my claim is that this parameter, k of g comma k, satisfies this following identity. Okay, so given a graph G and uh, any edge in the graph E, okay, we will assume that all our graphs are simple for the time being. Even otherwise, many of these things hold, but uh, we will not uh, work with that assumption. So, uh, given a graph G and uh, an arbitrary edge G. We uh, say that the chromatic, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, function, uh, or like you know the uh, the the k colorings of G using uh, 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 which are proper is equal to the number of k colorings of G without the edge G, right, G minus E, minus number of k colorings of G contraction E. Okay. So, you know, so like uh, basically what it is saying is that the number of colorings of this graph, right, is equal to the number of, I mean, k colorings of this graph is equal to number of k colorings of this graph minus the number of k colorings of this graph, right, using uh, the same, uh, you know, k colors, right. 
similarly for any kind right so i want you to uh, think about this and try to prove this identity yeah. okay so why so you know if you think about what uh, what is the proper coloring and what exactly uh, happens when you take the contraction or edge deletion uh, you can immediately come up with this identity it's, it's not a difficult thing just uh, you have to just think about what is meant by a proper coloring and what happens in g contraction e and what happens in g minus e right what is the difference between these two guys and what is the uh, similarity between these two guys okay so this will allow you to uh, give a proof for this okay so i think uh, this uh, so i think that is all uh, we have for uh, today and uh, we will look at a few more things in the next class and then we will go to some other topics for this course